the TV movie world at that time. You shoot, somebody else takes it from there. Sandy and I didn't know each other before, so his, that job was over for him, it was over for me. I wasn't in touch with, like, oh, how's the movie going? How's the editing going? It just was like, it's a TV movie, and now TV's got it. I went to normal college, and then I wandered around, and then I went to film school in Los Angeles. I went to UCLA. This guy named Tom Turley, who was at Gersh at the time, um, I don't know how he found me, but he found me and decided, he did, didn't I want an agent? So I was like, I don't know, I guess so. So anyway, he became my agent, and he was at the Gersh, uh, Gersh agency at the time. So I'm not positive, but I think that's probably how I got this the Amityville job. But I had done uh, at least one horror movie that actually I did. I did the infamous Hard Rock Zombies, which I don't think anybody ever saw. I'm not sure if it was even released, but it didn't star anybody you've ever heard of. It wasn't directed by anybody you've ever heard of. And, um, but it, it's probably, it was probably on my very early resume. But then I shot a movie called Chopping Mall. And that, that was sort of a, it actually has become more of a hit than it was at that time. It was just another schlocky horror movie. But somebody liked it enough that, like probably somebody, at, I don't know if it was Sandy, but uh, Sandy Stern, <clears throat> but somebody saw the movie. I, I'm guessing that, because that's the only thing that I really had any exposure based on. So that's how early in my career uh, Amityville came along. At that time, it was all about shooting in 35 millimeters. Like before I, before I got my 35 millimeter job, I shot a lot from ex, you know, former students that I'd gone to school with. And well, the thing that attracted me with, with film was interesting, creative, alternative, things I hadn't seen, right? Uh, a friend of mine from UCLA named Alex Cox, well, his first movie was Repo Man. Um, that was started as a student project and I was heavily involved at that stage. And so he went from hiring my, my friends, me and my friends, to hiring Robbie Mueller, who had done a movie at that time that was pretty famous called American Friend. Like, he was our hero. Um, as far as the mentor, having a mentor, and it's uh, not really. Um, and the one thing that, was, that is unusual, I think, about trying to become a director of photography, you don't, when you, I, I didn't want to be a camera assistant. So that's the normal or an operator. And that's the normal way you come up in that. And then maybe you'd be around a great DP on a, that's not you. But when you come up as a DP, I just went from film school right to trying to be a director of photography. I, I literally, it's like this is partly the time and I don't know, I don't really know, but I remember almost nothing about getting the job. It was, um, I don't remember, me, Sandy Stern, Sander Stern, the director. I remember we liked each other. We, I got along with him. But it was, um, <clears throat> I think it was my first, also I didn't do a lot of them, but it was my first TV movie. And the thing about TV movies is they have like this formalities, the, the way things are done. And Sandy knew all about that. And he'd, 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 he'd directed and edited and also wrote like, I don't know, 50 movies or something. And he knew, he knew all this stuff that I didn't have the slightest idea. I did, and I didn't get, basically I, what I kind of became with him was, uh, or, or I thought I'd be, I sort of felt like the lighting manager as opposed to the director of photography. And he knew where to put the camera because it worked in that position. And I looked at the movie last night and I'm like, I didn't think of those, most of those shots. I like them, but um, everything up until that point, and it never occurred to me that it was a different way to do it, there, I had operated. So to me, the cinematographer was the, the picture maker, and I was the one that was deciding when to stop panning, how wide for the shot to be, whether the shot should dolly in or, you know, whatever. And <clears throat> the first thing, the main thing I remember was, was with Sandy was, Tom, you don't do that. 
this is a professional film or whatever, you know, whatever it was called. It was for t it was a TV movie, but it was like there's an operator. And the way I work, you will, you, I don't even remember actually what he said at that point, but I just remember I was terrified as soon as he said that. It's like, what do I do? But basically, he, what he said is that he and the operator were going to do the shots. And my job was to, I guess, create the atmosphere or like, you know, I make sure all the lighting was good. I didn't have um, a monitor to look at what the, uh, the operator was doing. So he's the only person that really knew what, he, what they looked like. And anyway, I look at the movies around. Amityville was my first job where some strange stranger hired me. Before that, it was well. It was there was those hard bodies type movies, but I knew the director of those, and um, and then there was like um, Stand and Deliver, and these movies were. I I was I was working the way I knew how to work, which is basically to do a rehearsal, look through the camera, and decide what's going to look cool, and um, um, so when I started to work on Amityville. I felt like I didn't know what to do. I wasn't like, I knew what the story was and I knew that Patty Duke was gonna come down the stairs and then run into the kitchen, but I didn't have any sense of a flavor or, or what kind of a shot it was gonna be or what did it actually look like. So I was kind of lighting in broad strokes. But so the, the operating is sort of, it's, it's really good. And there are shots that I know now that I, I, I still would have trouble doing them just tilting up and panning over to the left and then somebody sits down and it just like, it sounds totally straightforward, but I can tell it wasn't me operating. But um, I think what, what happened, based on looking at the film, I don't know if you saw a comment somewhere about how it sure is lit up for a horror movie or it sure is bright for a horror movie. And the only thing I can figure about that, there's a, there's a couple of cool things at night, but the only thing I can figure about that is that I didn't have any feedback. And the last thing the operator cared about was the lighting. You know, he would have told me if there was a light in the shot or a flare off of something, or, you know, I just forgot about something. But I think also because I'm not sure what the question even was now, but I can tell you the, the biggest thing by far for me, and I, I later in my career totally adapted to and started to exploit or embrace having an operator. But I went from, from Amityville where I was just lost. I was just, all I was doing was getting, getting an okay and then kept going. Well, I knew how to do soft lighting and I had two older women who were the two main people in the movie and I was terrified of them not looking okay. So I didn't, it's really hard to do soft lighting and be moody, you know, unless you control the set. If you, if you, if you ever look, like, there's a lot of big movies or scary movies even where the lighting is really gentle, but it's contrasty but gentle. But it's what I've learned over the years, that there's this person called the production designer, and they make sure that that room, even though the lighting is soft, that room is really dark. So you can let light fall over, all over the place. So I had this house with like all these oh, white, white this rooms or very light colored rooms. And I look at the, the film and I'm like, there, I didn't cut the light off of anything. And I, but what I just imagine <clears throat> is that we were conscious of it, but for one thing, the speed was like double what I'm used to working at. So you put up a light and you start messing with it, that's it. You, no, move on, put up another light, let's go. But I think the, the combination of not operating and moving really, really fast, um, the result of is that the lighting is very bright and not contrasty enough. The kids' wardrobes were just bizarre. If you looked at this, just the, uh, one of the scenes that has everybody in it, you'd go like, who dressed those kids? But you realize it's, it's of the time but it's also of the time of television dictating a style which is dictated by, I think, commercials. Definitely one of the things that's different between TV and film is in, 
in TV, there's dress codes. And then they also used, I remember another thing, is they used colors. Like, to me, like, I guess I was a super, and I am still incredibly co color conscious. And I also know how film reacts to certain colors. And uh, I just know, like, I don't want to have a scene with somebody wearing bright blue and bright, bright red in, in the same scene. To me, it'll just ruin the it'll just ruin your experience of how you're watching these people. And not necessarily that, but the, the TV movies that I did, that tended to happen a lot. Like, we need more red. We need, we need some, let's have some red curtains. And I'm like, no, please, no red curtains. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So color, color was a little different in the TV world. Amityville was made by some network or some big company. It wasn't made by Sandy Stern. It was like, make this film. So it was, it was a little different for me too. It was like, I didn't really know who was in charge. I know if Sandy saw that the film came out in focus and stuff like that, for him that was good. And I'm not saying that he doesn't have a lot of art in him, but he also knew, he knew priorities that I didn't know anything about. So um, anyway, so yeah, that was, it was a, it was a, it was a, a rough experience. But one of the positive things was that Sandy knew what he was doing. So, um, so I was w at least working for somebody that I liked. But I felt like I wasn't, I never, I almost felt like the operator was the main guy. It's like one of my heroes was Robert Altman. And Robert Altman used zoom lenses all the time. But he like, he exploited them and pushed them to a limit. He just did zooms where nobody else would do zooms. And zooms were basically used in television. And so there was a part of a stigma in me somewhere. I was like, no, we don't use, I'm not using any zoom lenses. They're for doing your, they're for lazy dolly people. Consequently, for just carrying that forward, some, somehow this happened. I, I realized when I got to that movie, I hadn't used a zoom lens except for in, cl in classes to learn how to use it. As the movie went on, there wasn't, it's interesting, there, it, there wasn't a ton of zooms in the first half of the movie, and gradually they just got more and more and more. My car was in the movie, and it was a car that I only had for like a year and a half because it got bashed like when I was parked outside my house. This didn't, it was a brand new car, but it was an Acura. Anyway, it was like, I, I was just watching the movie, like, I'm, oh my God, that car looks like, oh yeah, it's got that sticker, yeah, that's my car. I was a, a cynical artist, so that TV movie about Amityville, I was like, I did it. I didn't get fired. <laughs> so, but that's that's probably the, that was it. And I did. I shot enough movies that, in at least in retrospect, that you couldn't. Well, you probably could keep track of like the, all the stages of each film. But I was probably like trying to prep something else or you know, or looking for another job, and, you know, and I just remember I really liked Sandy, but I didn't. He seemed to be from another world also, you know, like a super high-speed TV film production. And he's a, I could tell he's a good director just by even looking at our film. It looks better than what I remember. The, I mean, the acting, the scenes with the acting is good, but I, that, that relates to me also, that whole thing of like, that I, since I didn't operate, I, I don't have some of these memories that I watched last night when I watched the movie. And I'm like, oh, she looked great in that scene, and that's, that's some good acting. But I don't really remember it happening. <laughs> and I think it's because there's like zero feedback. 